Welcome to Mbakwa uh, Phosphate. Uh, these are 15 minutes of uh, daily uh, work in chemistry. I'm your brother Mbakwa Jonas Tatan, popularly known as Mbakwa Phosphate by my students all over the world. So, you are welcome. Welcome to Mbakwa Phosphate Academy 15 minutes. Yeah. Welcome to Mbakwa Phosphate Academy 15 minutes of chemistry. You can receive your lecture at any time with Mbakwa Phosphate. Depending on your program or work, we are available at any time for you. You can become an expert in chemistry. Yes, it's true. It's possible. Mbakwa Phosphate Academy offers you 15 minutes of lecture in chemistry every day. Fifteen minutes of chemistry with Mbakwa Phosphate Academy. Work at home, work in the office, work at any time. Work during break. Chemistry is easy. That's Mbakwa Phosphate thinking of better method to teach you chemistry. It's possible. Mbakwa Phosphate. Today we'll be looking at homologous series. I will be interested to know what is a homologous series, what are the properties of homologous series, the functional groups, arcanes, 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 alcohols, carboxylic acid, esters, uh, aldehyde, acid and hydride ketones, nitro arcanes, you, you have uh, amino acid. All these are different homologous series and the secret in organic chemistry is being able to convert from one homologous series to the other. What is the reaction condition? Now uh, when you are able to convert from one homologous series to the other, you have to note the reaction me uh, mechanism, you need to know exactly what is the reaction condition and then if you can name the compound then you know the different homologous series, their properties, their chemical reaction. You are done with organic chemistry. Let's kick started. Start homologous series. Have you heard of homologous series before? What is a homologous series? So a homologous series is a family of closely related compounds with similar structures. Members of a homologous series have the following properties. So, if you take a homologous series, for example, we are coming to see that CN H2N plus 2 is a homologous series of the arcanes. Now, if we have CN H2N, it will give us the homologous series of the arcanes. So you see that members of this group, when N is greater than or equals to 1, we are going to have the first member for the arcane, which is CH4, which is CH4. Don't mind about that line. When N here for arcanes must be greater than or equals to 2. So you observe that a homologous series, first property is that it must possess a general molecular formula for the R for the arcanes the general molecular formula is CN H2N plus 2 for the arcanes the general molecular formula is CN H2N so the first property as I have said is can be represented by a general molecular formula e.g. CN H2N plus 2 for arcanes the second is that can be prepared by similar method. All the members of a homologous series can be prepared by similar method. The third is that you can have similar chemical properties for all the series. The next is that you have a relative molecular mass of 14 greater than the preceding compound in the series. Greater than the preceding compound in the series. 
Let us see, for example, the first number of the arcane is C H four, and we observe that when n is equals to one. Now, when n is two, you see that we can have C two H six. Remember, the general molecular formula is C n H two n plus two. Have uh, that line appearing? I don't like it. The general molecular formula is C n H two n plus two. So you observe that we can. I can start writing the ethane by first of all writing methane. For example, if I write methane, what will be left is C H two. Yeah is CH2 and the mass of CH2 will be equals to 12 for carbon plus 2 for hydrogen which will be 14 that is what we call the mass of 14 so successive member the second member of the arcane is C2S6 number Fifth property is that the homologous series must have a regular gradation of physical properties. The physical properties must be similar and changing gradually. Now we want to look at what we call a functional group. Remember today we will really look at functional groups in details. Functional group. What we call a functional group. So you observe that a functional group is simply a functional group is an atom so a functional group can be an atom or group of atoms or a bond common to a homologous series and which determines the chemical properties of the series so we are coming to see that some homologous series will have atoms for example if you look at the homologous series of the alcohols we will say that in the alcohol we must have arrow which is an alkyl group attached to OH. This OH will be called a functional group. This OH is what we call a functional group. Yeah, that OH is what we call a functional group. Let me try to bring the eraser and then I erase this line. This line is not needed. I'm interested to show you exactly this OH here now let me take back my pen so you can see that what we call a functional group there are a group of atoms you see OH is a group of atoms O and H oxygen hydrogen now this is what we call a functional group of the alcohols R Cohorts. So you see that the functional group of the alcohols is this OH. This OH. Now, if I take homologous series, general formula, functional group, functional group, we are going to see that there is what we call the suffix. Yes. There's what we call the suffix of a functional group. And there's what we call the prefix used. The prefix used is what we are going to be using, is what we are going to be using as a kind of a, the ending of the, what we are naming. You know that in homologous series, the homologous series will teach us different methods that we will be able to uh, uh, the different names given to different homologous series so now if we know the uh, homologous series we know the suffix that's the functional group then we can know the prefix the prefix here is what will be how the end, a name of the homologous series n that is what we are going to be looking at now the first homologous series is the arcanes. RH, the arcane do not really have a, a, 
a functional group, so to say, because the alkyl group is all linked to uh, hydrogen atoms. So all the hydrogen atoms are linked. So it, for the alkane, that's why we say that the suffix, the functional group here, the suffix, we are not really writing anything there, but the ending of the name of an alkane will end with A N E. Now for the alkenes, you see that the carbon must be bonded to another carbon by a double bond. Now the functional group of this compound is the carbon to carbon double bond. Is the carbon to carbon double bond. That's the functional group. Is the carbon to carbon double bond. So you observe that the carbon to carbon double bond here, carbon now will be linked to a hydrogen atom like the case of 18 and the name will end with E N E. That's a functional group of the uh, arcanes. Now the next functional group will be the functional group of the arcanes. The functional group of the arcanes we will have iron linked to carbon triple bond linked to carbon triple bond and we are going to have a hydrogen atoms here now you observe that the functional group that we are considering here is the carbon to carbon triple bond and you can count the number of carb uh, bonds around each carbon atom it must be equal to four one two three four Around this carbon atom, you have one, you have two, you have three, and you have four bonds. That now explains why we have already seen before now in the other lecture that carbon is tetrahedra. So carbon can link to four different hydrogen atoms as such. Are you seeing? Carbon can link to one, two, three, four different hydrogen atoms. So you know that carbon is in group four of the periodic table. So this carbon has four valence electrons. This carbon has four valence electrons. So now it goes and combines all the four valence electrons in carbon in the molecule of methane, which is in the molecule of methane, which is uh, an arcane is linked to uh, four different hydrogen atoms thereby using all its four valence electrons one two three four yes that is what we are saying so each carbon atom must have four bonds surrounding it each carbon atom must have four bonds surrounding it if it doesn't then it is not stable that's the case of alkynes. Alkynes here, the functional group is carbon to carbon triple bond. It's carbon to carbon triple bond. The ending of the name will be YNE. In the next lecture, we will be looking at numeric lecture. The next homologous series is the archi halide. Like I've explained before, we'll be looking at different methods to convert one homologous series to the other. Organic chemistry will be very easy as a fallen back of phosphate academy. The next homologous series which we are interested to know is archaeolite. Now archaeolite is simply a metal group attached as we are going to take note of these asterisks. This one that have asterisks. These asterisks will mark uh, those marked with the asterisk, this star, uh, arrow, this arrow and also this arrow uh, stand for an alkyl group or a halogen. So the alkyl group, this other can be a, an alkyl group or a halogen. But those without asterisk, those without asterisk, they stand only, uh, other stand only for an alkyl group. Those without asterisk, other here must be an alkyl group in the alkane. But those with this asterisk, other here can be an alkyl group and it can also be a hydrogen atom. Alright, so you see that when a halogen is bonded to uh, when a halogen is bonded to an alkyl group, remember an alkyl group is a group that we got from an arcane 
when the alkane lost one hydrogen atom. For example, if we look at the case of, uh, uh, we can think of C, C, H, 4, when it lost one hydrogen atom, it gives us C, H, 3. This group was named, this is methane, and this group is named just like methane, but we replace the we replace the what? The A N E with Y L E. We replace the A N E with Y L E. So instead of methane, we call it methyl. Instead of methane, we call it methyl. So you see. So this is H here. This is methyl. So you see that the alkene here which is methane lost one hydrogen CH3. This is an alkyl group. So for the asteric, the uh, star here can be hydrogen and the star here, this arrow can be hydrogen and this arrow can be an alkyl group. But for those without the asteric, arrow must be an alkyl group. So when a halogen is bonded to an alkyl group, you see there is no asteric here, meaning that this arrow cannot be a hydrogen atom. It is called an alkyl halide. X here can be chlorine, bromine, and iodine. The functional group is this X, which is this bromine, halogeno. We name this compound the ending, the prefix. The ending of this nomenclature is halogeno. Okay. Uh, you have chloro, uh, uh, methane. We start by naming the halogen. All right, let's move to the next homologous series. Homologous series of the alcohol. We observe that the functional group is the presence of this of this man. This OH is the functional group. This is the functional group of the alcohol. So anything we call alcohol, the name will end with O or hydroxyl. Anything we call alcohol must have OH. Anything we call alcohol must have OH. The next is ester. The next is ester. You know that alcohol, when we look at isomerism, you observe that alcohol have uh, undergo a kind of isomerism we call functional group isomerism with the ether. Now you see the ether is here, arrow is linked to O, arrow. Now, but you see here that this arrow here can be an alkyl group or it can be uh, this arrow here can be an alkyl group. Alcohol. It can be an alkyl group or it can also be a hydrogen atom. Because iron N must be greater than or equals to one so that we can have methanol. We can have methanol where carbon is one. All right, you can have ethers here. They will undergo a kind of isomerism. We call it the functional group isomerism. Completely, you will see that under isomerism. So you, you observe, you see here, we call it the acoxy. That is the ethers, the acoxy. All right, we move to the next homologous series. And this time around, we are looking at the ketones. The ketones, yes. Can you imagine? The ketones is looking funny. I know you would already thought of. Yeah, I did not put this particular double bond here. The carbon atom bonded to. You see, arrow and arrow prime is also present here. Now you see that I have not yet put the double bond here. So a ketone. Uh, let me. You see that eraser must come now and we take off this so uh, we are going back to get our pain so that we can write yes you observe that that is what they call the functional group this is the functional group of the ketones its name we call it the arm o n e yes this is what called we call the ketone this is what we 
determine the properties of the ketones. Don't forget, I just pass at the height. Yes, at the height. You see, so we have to also add to the aldehyde this bond. And you see that the aldehyde is different from the ketone in that the carbon to double bond, carbon to carbon, carbon to oxygen double bond is linked to this hydrogen here. Yes, for the aldehyde, but for the ketones, it is linked to two alkyl group, two alkyl group. That's interesting. Now, carboxylic acid. Yes. What do we call a carboxylic acid? Here we are. This is a double bond. Excuse me, I must take that eraser again. Yes, I'm doing everything to see that we are able to follow up and see exactly. Let me take back my pain. Yes. So, the double bond there is on oxygen. And then remember there must be a double bond here for us to have the oic, the oic acid. This is what we call the functional group, the functional group of the carboxylic acid. All the compounds of carboxylic acid must have this functional group. Now for the esters, can you imagine? The double bond is here, esters. Remember that the reaction we call in chemistry esterification. It is a very useful, a very useful, you know, a very useful uh, reaction for chemists. Yes, there are chemists that are specialized only in uh, producing esters from the reaction of um, an alcohol with an acid. Yes, from the reaction of an alcohol with an acid. Yes, this is the oxygen atom. It must be bonded by this double bond to the carbon and this is what we call the functional group of the of the esters esters this process is called esterification we are going to have the alkyl or what we call the oid ethyl ethanoid is an example we are going to see that so let us proceed now to acid and hydride. Acid and hydride. Yes, interestingly, you observe that the functional group of acid and hydride, we see there's this double bond here, and there is also a double bond here. So the functional group of two carbon that are covalently bonded to the ox two oxygen atoms by covalent bond. This is the functional group of what we call the acid and hydride. You go to acid chloride. Yes, for acid chloride, there is a double bond here. Carbon is bonded to this oxygen double bond. Then, there's, interestingly, the carbon atom, these are all derivatives of the carboxylic acid. Uh, uh, you see the carbon, the double bond, the OH have been replaced by chlorine. So this is what we call acid and hydride. Now you have acid amide. Yes, the acid amide or acid. So they are derivatives of the carboxylic acid. <laughs> they, they are all derivatives of the carboxylic acid. Without carboxylic acid, we can't have this. That's why they are all named acid. Acid chloride, acid and hydride. We just add an hydride to the acid group. You know there was. A group here that all it will have now been replaced by this hydride group, uh, acid chloride. Yes, you see the OH have been replaced now by chlorine. Yes, that's what we call the functional group here. That is, that is it. Now acid amide we replace the uh, the OH with NH2. That is it. You see, this is what we call acid amide. That is the homologous series. All right. Now, we also have what we call the nitroalkanes. The nitroalkanes. Now, for the alkane, the H, the hydrogen of the alkane, remember? Yes, this is what we have for the alkanes. The hydrogen of the alkane now will replaced with the nitro group. Nitro group. You can imagine. I will replaced by the nitro group. And then this is the nitro group. The, sub, uh, the name of this compound, the prefix, 
will be nitro we have nitro benzene yes when the alkyl group is replaced we also have uh, uh, nitriles yes what do we call nitriles these nitriles is simply uh, let me take that off uh, excuse me yeah. what we call the nitriles is as simple as this this nitrate is simply an alkyl group a group of compound alkyl group which is linked to this carbon that is connected linked to nitrogen by triple covalent bond so the functional group of what we call the nitrile is simply this yes remember now when we are looking at uh, copper, when we are looking at um, for this, uh, uh, when we are looking at compounds, for example, we saw that in nitrogen molecule, uh, the nitrogen atom was covalently bonded to another nitrogen atom by uh, one, two, three, three uh, uh, triple covalent bond. That is exactly what we are talking about here. So you see that nitriles, the compound we will be looking at here, nitriles, is this compound. The alkyl group we are here can stand only for an alkyl group. This is the functional group. What do we call amino acid? Yes, you must have done amino acid in biology. It is simply a group of compound. Our arrow there now, you see, is now linked to the NH2 group. And then you see COO, COOH amino acid. It's an acid. That's why you see this group of the acid there. You have seen the group of the acid. So don't be confused with any of these homologous series. Any of these homologous series, you can master them. Yes, we are just trying to show you that it's possible to master chemistry. But now what I'm trying to show you, we want you to master each of these homologous series, master the suffix, master the prefix. Now, as we master the suffix, master the prefix, we will be able, when we go down to make lecture, you see how we will play with each of these homologous series. You will see. But now, this is Bakwa for Sphere Academy. You can contact us at mobile 6799531 can also have 6644632576778328852. You can email all about quaphosphet at gmail.com. On our YouTube is our YouTube page, just type Bakwa Phosphate Academy. Facebook page, we have a Facebook page, we have created a Facebook group that will be able you can ask your question and tell us how you feel about our lecture. And if you are a colleague watching, you can tell us how you feel get back to us we want to improve in these skills and we want to work with everybody uh, we are listening to your uh, corrections uh, if you enjoy this uh, video if you enjoy this lecture consider subscribing and don't forget you can always send uh, the link to your friends uh, it's 15 minutes with Bakwa Phosphate Academy, 15 minutes with Bakwa Phosphate Academy. We want to be very sure that you will be very an expert in chemistry. We love you and we hope that you did enjoy the chemistry lessons. Bakwa Phosphate Academy is doing everything possible to make sure that you become an expert in chemistry. To make sure that you become an expert in chemistry. Yes, take your time, Master, because the next lesson we are going to be working with, we are going to be working with our nomenclature. We'll be looking at nomenclature in our next lesson. So you need to just master this functional group. Remember, you can always subscribe, always subscribe to our six, you can subscribe to our six months six months of serious serious work
to finish your syllabus in A level chemistry. My purpose for signing off. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was it for the day. Hopefully, going to meet you in our next lesson. That was great working with you. Tell us how you feel about our lecture. Don't forget to subscribe. Consider subscribing. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.